Welcome to another episode of The Bottom Line. I am Sabrin. Kushan. And today's episode is brought to you by Team Group Memory. Team Group Memory is one of the world's leading manufacturers of high performance RAM and they specialize in AMD certified, Intel certified as well as vendor and brand specific RAM. Team Group RAM is the preferred choice for overclockers and enthusiasts. Check out more information in the links below. Okay, alright. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so let's start off the episode with some graphics card news. Um, Intel finally came out and announced that they will be putting out their first high-end dedicated graphics card in 2020. It came with this, uh, put up an image of this uh, very weird announcement on Twitter with the big face of Raja Kuturi. <laughs> and if you do not know who Raja Kuturi is, he was the former head of AMD Radeon Graphics. Yes, Radeon right Technologies Group, with who left for Intel, I think, about Poached, here. rather. He didn't poached. Really. Poached, poached by Intel. Yes. Uh, and less than a year, I think, after he was poached, we have this announcement that Actually, he... It was last, last December, so it was... Wow. So was not even, quite fun. Yeah, it's so, barely half a year. I think, I think uh, that uh, explains why he left. Yeah, pretty he much. He was probably working with Intel at some level. So for you gamers out there, before you get ahead of yourselves, you have to keep in mind that I think Intel have only mentioned that Gaming will be one, if not one, maybe one of the uh, yes. end uses of their GPU, but they are definitely developing a GPU right now. True. And I think, I think yeah. they'll, they'll aim at the enterprise. Enterprise, I think these are going to be more compute heavy cards that are also capable of playing games. Yes. So. So, like I think what happens with new technologies, especially nowadays, is that the money that funds the R&D into these graphics cards is almost always from the enterprise space, True. at least if you're a small time player. So since even even big tempers, even guys like Nvidia, but their R&D budget is active regardless. Yes. Like, uh, but right now, I'm sure that Nvidia, the majority of their profit earnings are definitely from the enterprise space. So Intel are going to be looking to um, develop something that could go head to head against Radeon's Pro Graphics and Nvidia's True. Quadros and Teslas. And, and, and it, end of the day, it is a graphics card, so you will get some game from that. Is true. So what Intel will probably do is they probably develop a chip, and then they will. Once they've maybe once, once it's, it's viable, out there, they will trickle it down into a GPU. You'll probably again. see a couple of GPUs. And again, like I, I was reading some of these, um, most of these are rumors, right? There's no hard evidence of even what this is going to be. Most uh, sources point towards like maybe like a 1060 ish level graphics card in 2020. So in two years down the line, it won't be really high end, but it will still be capable. It would be, although that does sound very vague. It <laughs> and does I feel sound like no one would have any way of knowing <laughs> I what know. the performance. But I know. if they do manage to do something and price it pretty aggressively, yeah. see yeah. The, what what makes me excited about this is the fact that one is it's, it's being headed by uh, you know one of AI, Radeon Technologies most celebrated uh, figureheads yes. um, and he did wonders with the Radeon group and essentially we all know that Radeon made their comeback under him in the last few years. Yes, the RX 480s, 580s, those were under, under him. So under very capable person and the fact that Intel, uh, whatever said and done, are a, a juggernaut in the exactly. process they, industry. They have, they have a lot of money to throw. Exactly and they've so. made a ton of money in different areas of the process industry so it'll be interesting to see. And and even even for I'd say market adoption. I think Intel have a lot behind them. They have, True. They, have they work very closely with pretty much all the OEMs. Yes. Right? So and everyone has Intel CPUs. If, if so. anyone else was to make a GPU and you still had the choice of buying an NVIDIA or AMD, you probably would like probably ignore would. them. But if yes. it's Intel, Intel, Intel have the marketing, marketing and they have the course. channels to push this into like a large number of say they make a decent workstation card, right? Yeah. So it could be like a default offering with like all HP and Dell workstations. True, true. So potential is there. Potential is and there. I think currently given the amount of money that I think they are seeing other partners make in the enterprise, deep learning, uh, simulation space, like they are definitely aiming to get into that and compete in that. Makes sense for Intel as well. So pretty exciting stuff because if you have three GPU uh, true. Yeah, at least, at least in, the, in the future, yeah. it's going to be amazing for us consumers because it's going to drive prices down, you're going to get better performance. And Intel did try this a few years ago with Larabee, it didn't work out, but you know, you never know. I mean, they've got... Actually, did you watch Linus had this yeah, video? that was a great, that video. Was a great video. We'll try to link we'll that link it there. It's an amazing so, video. Like even, even we were under the impression that like Larabee was a failure. A failure. It, it didn't go wasn't. anywhere. Like that technology has been used in like a lot of things. Yes. Apparently. So I don't think, well, we don't know, but it doesn't look like Intel are taking quite the same route. 
they are i think looking to go they are, they are proper, going yes like they are making like announcements saying it will be a consumer gpu yeah okay. so exciting stuff yes so um a little bit closer in time um amd have announced the radon pro v340 that's uh, essentially it's a vega chip 7 nanometer so we were discussing 7 nanometer gpus over the past couple of episodes so this is their first 7 nanometer offering they haven't said too much about the product all we have to go by is they released like a slide it's not even released it's like leaked slide which is apparently legit um so the only details they put up is um um 32 gb of hpm2 so should have had more ram than most of you will yes. ever have at home <laughs> exactly built in security processor up to that two concurrent users so uh, design and manufacture and oil aim, and gas yeah okay. oil and gas media and entertainment so i feel like it's again one of those cards that it aimed at deep learning maybe probably although they didn't mention deep they didn't mention so deep learning <laughs> probably so. calculation heavy yes. workloads the and radon pros are essentially what the fire pros used to be right yes so it's it's going to compete in the quadro fire pro yes so probably for for simulations uh media entertainment maybe for workstation use as well if you maybe. need like a really high end car too like probably it does has to exam 36 so. i feel like maybe it's going to compete with the p5000 p6000 True. range the G, gv100 Tesla's it could be one of those. Like AMD's last offering in that range was quite decent, right? I think what was it called? The, the WX91. WX91. That's pretty decent. It's pretty decent. It's a long time ago, though. Long time ago, I think about four years ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's ancient in terms of graphics cards. So uh, there is no real information on what this is. So a few, a few rumors saying that it could be like a multi GPU solution. I heard those rumors too. Yeah. So yeah. there is a chance that it, that which much I hope the 32 GB is addressable though. Yeah, it will be a shame to be like 260 if you yeah that's usually how these multi gpu cards yes, work where they but, have two but then again this is uh, we, we well. haven't seen like the hpm the new technology how it how works, it works so well. gpu so it, it could be all 32 and 2 gpus that can address everything yeah. so we'll, we'll, we'll find out we'll, we'll find out we'll find so out soon enough so these are expected i think expected to be available before the end of the year right so, so this is probably not something that the regular layman is going to get excited about i mean I highly doubt that we would see it short I, of I, yeah. I mean it's not like we haven't sold cards like this we have sold Teslas in the past and high end quadros True. in the past so there definitely will be a use for it but not for your regular if you're a 3D modeler and you're looking at the 32 GB of RAM and you're like oh man that's going to be amazing uh it's probably going to be amazing but it's also awesome. probably going to cost you an arm and a leg <laughs> expensive yes, probably going to be upwards of 5 lakhs around yeah, the 1 million to a mark million mark but you can see how these gpu manufacturers um i feel like that's really the field that they want to be playing in because exactly. that's clearly a high margin segment because even if they're making something like 20 to 40% they're making 20 to 40% per card on like a million rupee product so you're making a lot more money and uh, <coughs> usually the people who are willing to buy cards like this aren't really care they don't really care about the retail price they're not looking to penny pinch because they are going to buy this like this is card. this is where like like the 40 50 100 million budgets for like movies come from yeah exactly. they buy like hundreds of these, these cards <laughs> and, and it, yes. you know because they are going to earn back exactly. that like many many exactly. times yes. over so for them it's just like a number on a sheet so but it'll be interesting to see what the card yes. can offer and yes it'll also be interesting to see like when this actually comes out how it trickles down into the there'll definitely be a gaming gpu based off this over time over time over yeah. time so like say once this launches over the next couple of quarters we will see hardware coming out so it will be interesting once that starts happening it would be and we'll let you know if it runs crisis exactly um keeping on with the graphics cards we didn't see any announcements for the new nvidia cards yes the nothing at all actually apparently actually the um, when the head of nvidia the ceo i think was CEO, doing a small yes. announcement and he was asked as to when we are going to have cards based on uh, was it um, well, the new technology is volta so yeah okay. i think one of the people in the media had asked him if there are going to be new graphics cards coming out based on volta and his answer was not for a long time exactly although that a lot of people say that that what he was trying to say there is that it's not going to be based on volta but they are going to have a te- like a Uh, a refresh another a refresh. refresh or something of uh, the uh, architecture is either going to be ampli or turing and they are going to have those cards coming out you know in their usual time frame of you know between july and september so if it's if it's july i would have expected a an announcement something, something at come maybe they are waiting to uh, why would they wait like, it's a good question i, I don't i like right now md doesn't seem to be going 
like they don't seem to be putting out anything they don't they haven't even hinted that anything like this is all workstation right i mean they so, don't stand to gain financially i guess from putting out a high end card considering that 1070s and 1080s are selling so well already true uh, like but you money. never know with like, nvidia like no even, even local even local market we have people like oh wait for the next generation cards yeah so people aren't really dropping money into the high end cards unless they absolutely need to you've seen a that little bit true. of slow down so i'm pretty sure this is our market right our market is anyway not the the largest market for high end stuff i'm pretty sure this is even more in like say the us market people they wouldn't drop 600 dollars on in 80 ti right? they can get a they are waiting for like 1170 1180 so maybe that is the reason that they didn't announce it see what would that what if you announce something it automatically is going to hit you on sales for the next couple of months mm. so maybe their plan was to cuz it's been it's been okay. so long so, since so, they announced it all right so that 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 means that they don't have anything for at least another quarter right maybe they, or they maybe they would have announced it well we'll see <laughs> i am kind of holding out because there were a lot of rumors pointing to them yeah, exactly announcing some cards and none of the rumors really pointed them towards them announcing it at computex at computex yeah, so fair, fair enough, we'll see i mean if july like a rumor on rumor yeah so so if july august september rolls around and we still don't get any information from nvidia or any leaks then yeah then maybe yeah, we might be waiting for the christmas december season before any announcement comes into play i'd be very disappointed if they don't do something for christmas they'll miss out on another big shopping season it's true it's true but then the whole the whole mining ride that you know we've been on for the last 2 years has really thrown how i think nvidia and amd are looking at their graphics card production because end of the day if you are manufacturing a certain number of cards and those cards are selling regardless uh, yes. and considering the mining demand they clearly sold at least between 5 to 10 times more cards than they otherwise That's would true. have so all of these factors into the fact that whatever money they planned on making in 2018 they probably have probably already hit those hit. targets yes So right now they don't really have an incentive. Like you know, Nvidia have R and D for their next gen tech, you, and the fact that the V three forty that you just uh, you know yeah. talked about already shows that you know AMD is on their way towards Navi or a new uh, generation of. But they are not. They like the fact that they haven't put out high end cards hasn't stopped them from making money. Because they, they are continuously true. making money think, on their high end Teslas, also, on the Quadros, yeah, on the Fire. This is also addressed. Like they they had made good money on the mining cards. Yes. So. So uh, right now, as a consumer, yeah, it kind of sucks that it's been this long. I think what close to two years now since it's we saw it. Yes, I think I think a couple of weeks ago um, there, we had this. Uh, you get Facebook two years ago mm-hmm. post. There was a post with like the 1080s. Two years ago. Yes. Wow. It was June last yeah, year. Yeah. But that, this is that's kind of what happens when you know you have like external factors playing to a market. You know. I mean, I don't really blame either of them because if you're going to make True, money yeah, like, like from the current products, the current products are still good. Yeah, great. Still, yeah, I and mean, you can't really complain. Like exactly. currently, if like you're a full HD gamer, you don't need anything better than a 1070. Right? Yeah, like if you get a 1070 right now, it's not going to mean it's going to be a slow card. It's still True. a really good card. And the prices have come down. They have very they're normalized. Topics. I think they're yes. very close to their original pricing. Yes. Not the worst time to be buying a card. Yeah, exactly. Now. Like what you can get a 1070 for like 95 now. 95,000. I'd probably. say the lowest it went was like 85, right? So, yeah. So right, it's, oh, it's all right. I mean, I'm not really complaining. It's just that it's a little disappointing when you yes. get hyped up and you're hoping for a new yeah, card yeah, announcement. Exactly. But we'll see. I mean, we still have another two, three months. Yes. We don't know for sure yet. So. Yeah, we don't know for sure. Yeah. So um, yeah. So we have uh, a few more uh, leaks, but this time around, centered around processes. Um, like we are talking about prior to this, like the last few episodes, Intel are rumored to be releasing uh, eight uh, core part this year, uh, very soon actually. And there are a lot of rumors as well as leaked slides showcasing on various on the sites of Sandra database, as well as weirdly enough on some benchmarks in Ashes of the Singularity, um, showing a Xeon um, E series, which is essentially uh, Intel's new branding for their E3 Xeon processors. They're just calling it Xeon E now. Um, and there is an 8 core that has showed up on a lot of the benchmarks or leak slides or whatever, and uh, there it stands to gain that there is going to be a Core i7 that is based on that because that's normally how it works. Like the Xeon E's are generally based on the desktop i5 and i7s. So we have seen that 8 core in a lot of be- in a lot of leaks, and I feel like we are just about a month or two yeah, away it, from it's, them announcing. It's somewhere that it's getting around. It's all engineering samples, though. Yeah. So far, I mean, there's specifically even in the code name, it's mentioned as an engineering sample. But right now, there's just too much of information out there True. for it not to get released. The only question is how competitive 
the eight co is going to be and when did they say they were going to announce this is it 390 is it september i think what the so i feel like september. both are going to go, probably come around september those of you who've been holding out for a processor on the mainstream 6 to 8 co and you're say a productivity enthusiast this is not aimed at gamers Uh, yeah, I mean, they say it's aimed at gamers, they but will, it's they not aimed at gamers. They definitely marketed at gamers. But it's like really more cores, more cores. <laughs> you know, multitask, multitask gaming ability. You know, like you stream, play a game, your mom stream, can play a stream, game, your sister can play a game. Streaming, streaming is like big now, so they definitely pitch this as like streamers, yeah. like extra two cores for streaming. Yeah, something like that. something, some nonsense like that. But really, long story short. We are going to be excited about it because if you're into video editing or if you're into 3D modeling, 3D modeling, especially anything, mocos, more it's always better. I'm interested to see where Intel are going to plant it in terms of pricing. Uh, but the good thing is every week we keep getting new information about it, so that's that means it's yeah, practically done. Yes, exactly. That's a lot of information about this processor. Yeah. So right now the 2700X, like we said before, and the 2700 are really our go-to processors yes, for production. We actually, we actually did a couple of benchmarks. The 2600X with like a moderate overclock. Kind of out does uh, 8700, and um, I think we had to get a 8700K to about 4.2 on all cores to match a 2600X at really? about 4. So wow, so that's does. and that's that is a huge price difference. It's like a know, exactly. 20,000 price, price difference. difference, and the 2600X comes with the cooler. So. Yeah, exactly. So, so that so tells you that the 8 core is yes. you know it's kind of stomping all over Intel's territory right exactly. now. Intel probably not too happy about that. So. I feel like when it's going to come out, we're going to see a great processor, and it's going to be hopefully priced aggressively. No. Mm-hmm. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Knowing it, like considering a 8700K is selling for like 62, I'm yeah. expecting like what? 75 to 80. Yeah, but if the performance improvement is good and if it overclocks well, Intel have done well in that category. True, but again, it, it'll be that 20,000 again, right? It's true. It's true. I mean, Intel could pull a fast one and be like, here it is. Priced at the price of a 2700X, no. but that's not how Intel rolls. Not how Intel rolls. Not taught us anything. <laughs> no. Uh, so but not. yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, a lot of hearsay, but we'll see. When it rolls around, we'll be the first people to bring it to you. We're definitely going to be one of the first shops. Probably the first shop that's going to have it on our shelves. Yes. Um, but now, keeping on the Intel. Uh, yeah, they did. They did announce a couple of. Um, Couple of 5 gigahertz products, so one being the 8086, yes, i7 8086, uh, which we spoke about, yes. and it is now up for retail. It's available globally. Um, Intel has officially, you know, released all of the information regarding it. It's Intel's 40th anniversary processor, and blah 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 blah. But what? After a lot of reviewers got their hands on it and put it through its paces, and we found out the actual details. What it actually is. Is essentially a cherry-picked i7 8700K, which shouldn't really surprise anybody, considering it was identical in every way. Um, and what was a little disappointing is the fact that um, its base clock, as well as all of its turbo bins, except for the single-core turbo, is identical to an 8700K. So you're not going to get better performance if you're using two or more cores out of the box. It's Literally going to be the exact same, same as a stock 8700K. It's yeah. only if you're using one core, which let's be honest, Windows very ever rarely uses one core because yeah. it's always got some even, nonsense even Windows, running in the background. Even Windows uses more than yeah. One so if you're using one core, it'll go up to five gigahertz out of the box. But that's pretty much where the novelty is. How off. much? How much? What, what's the price premium? I think they're selling it for about four twenty, four thirty right now. It's about so it's about forty to fifty dollars. Not bad. Not bad. Not I guess, great. I guess. Either. I guess to say that you have got your hands on like a limited edition, edition. product, it's yeah, okay. It's okay. alright. It's ten percent more. Um, it's okay. I don't think we will stock it. No. Uh, but if you <laughs> want it, one, like you it, can order it. If you, if you really look at like a price to performance, it really doesn't make sense. Makes no get, sense. Get True. a eight seven hundred K overclock at that. Yeah, and uh, or a twenty seven hundred X or oh, name because of that. If just you really want to, there are just process. better options out there. Yes. I mean, I have no doubt Intel will probably sell out yes. because it's Intel, and you know the way these markets work is people have too much money and they know what to do with. So they're just going to see a limited edition process they're going to buy. It. But as far as ah, uh, you know, back feedback yes. on it to you is it's uh, yeah. not worth your time. <laughs> Um, and keeping on that same uh, train of thought, um, AMD uh, have pulled off something cheeky and uh, epic troll. <laughs> and I like how AMD and Intel sometimes poke fun at each other 
It's it's usually AMD poking poking, poking fun at Intel. And Intel will be laughing and they'll be like hurting inside. Ha 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 they gave away right Was i that? believe so i'm not really sure about it but i think they either gave away or it was the first 40 people to buy their 886 processor okay. one of the two <laughs> um i think it was a giveaway i think it was a giveaway okay it was a giveaway right. so it was a giveaway yeah it was Lame a giveaway. Cow if it is wrong <laughs> so it's a giveaway apparently so intel gave away about 40, 40 of their processors. processors so what amd did was they offered anyone who got one of those processors to come trade it in free of charge to uh 16 core Threadripper 1950X processor. That's that's, that's trolling and on the next level. That's at its highest level. <laughs> trolling yeah. at its highest level. I mean, AMD could have totally gotten away with like a 2700X. Yeah, but like like no, like that what that tagline was uh, what was this? Here's to the future of high performance computing. <laughs> yeah. So, they were like, "Look, I see your 6 cores and I raise you 16." Uh, and it is what it is. So those luck for I mean you, you, you I mean those 40 40 people have the choice obviously and they can hold on to the Intel processor or they can go trade in and I feel like the majority of them are probably going to trade in the processor trade mainly in. because the AMD processor yeah. costs twice as twice much. As much. It's yeah. an $800 dollar part. And, but yeah significantly. And it's just better <laughs> in every way. Yeah. I mean true the Intel might be faster in games but you know the but, AMD wins yeah. in practically everything as it's 16 cores and 32 threads and you'd be pretty stupid to hold on to your 5 gigahertz i7 8086 yeah. unless you're like collecting it and you want to put it on your little collection i, I guess i guess uh, but yeah too shit to amd so they just put it out there you know with the pr release and everything and you know it's out there and i'd be interested to know how many people actually buy exactly we'll see we'll probably see some statistics sometimes so yeah we'll, yeah we'll try to follow up on that so sometimes so. um computex will uh, we didn't discuss too much about computex we'll have another segment Um, dedicated, com- to dedicated to just Computex com- with one of our directors, Zafran, who was lucky enough to go to Computex this year, and he had taken a lot of footage, which I believe we've already put up a lot of photographs and an entire album to that on our yes. Facebook page. Uh, we, have we have video coming we, out soon. We have a few hours worth of videos, so we need to we need to filter through them, and we'll pick out some. Of, we can't have like hours and hours of yeah, footage. Yeah, we we'll, we'll so pick the best stuff. We pick the best stuff, and we'll put uh, together something. And we'll also do another episode with him soon this week, hopefully, with uh, talking about all the cool stuff that he saw at Computex, spliced with really cool footage. So something to would look that, forward. Would to. that go up if this? Uh, we'll see. It might come out next week at the rate that we are going. Because sometimes you tend to go behind on videos. Yes. This video was supposed to come out last week, but you know sometimes with busy schedules, it's hard. Uh, but yeah, it's a really going to be a really cool episode. So yes. let's look forward to that. So just just to sing on Computex. Um, interesting thing that I saw: both Asus and Gigabyte being like the two largest motherboard manufacturers and two of the largest graphics card manufacturers. Also, they had diversified into. all of the components that go into a system so uh, essentially we are at the point now where you can essentially build the entire system and the only thing non asus or non gigabyte that you need would be like a processor mm. so they have everything from motherboards graphics cards obviously to coolers power supplies ram gigabyte did ram or as ram RGB. does asus have coolers yes they are not to cool Really? Okay. Cool. All right. Like, wow. Like, okay. Like ROG cool, right? Okay. So they Asus announced a power supply. Yeah. That was a, that supply. was coming. That was Gigabyte coming. already have their power supplies, and uh, Asus have their M.2 SSDs, right? Yeah. SSDs. Gigabyte announced their SSDs uh, in yeah. this Computex. Um, It's not the first time I would say component manufacturers have gone into other. I mean, EVG did that with true, quite but, a bit of success a few years ago. But this is like at a whole new level. Like, like the only outside component would be a processor. EVG did do that apart from the cooler. Although they might even have a cooler that I just don't know about. They did cases, they, they, they did power supplies, they did motherboards, the motherboard, graphics cards. RAM they didn't have. But they didn't they have, have RAM, RAM SSDs. Like now this is everything. Yeah, that is true. Gigabyte, I mean, gigabyte, when gigabyte and Asus are a little bigger than EVGs in terms of size <laughs> and scope. So it is it, it was a trend. Like we did definitely did see that. Like Gigabyte, like he said Gigabyte's making RAM. <laughs> like they have an RGB that, RAM that, kit. That RAM kit is actually pretty cool. It comes in either 16 GB or 32 GB. Mm-hmm. So it's dual channel. But your kit contains four modules. Yes. So two dummy. Two modules. dummy modules, which also sync with our. I don't know how that works. Uh, I think they have the controller. So the the so RGB strips, yeah, are still like fully working RGB strips. It's just okay. that the actual chips 
the RAM dummy uh, cards don't have any chips on them. Yeah, exactly. But so the controllers, the yeah. So, so you this, pay this, for four. Yeah, so this is a concern like people usually have when you're building an ICE system, you buy like 16 gigs of RAM. You have like two RAM slots and two yeah. IMT. Then you, then you have to go buy either two. And RAM's RAM, expensive. And RAM's expensive or you you get like more RAM than you actually need. Mm. Right? Just so you fill in the four slots. But this is interesting. Yeah, like you, and they're not really charging you a premium either. Exactly. So you're getting it's like a very small amount more for yeah. the so it's, And it, it looks good. I mean, I hate to say it, but they, they made good <laughs> exactly. looking RAM. Exactly. It's going to be odd for someone to just go out and buy gigabyte RAM. Gigabyte RAM, exactly. But I think if but the choice say, is there, why not? Yeah, say say you have a gigabyte graphics card in the motherboard. And like, why not? Why and not you get RAM? everything to sync perfectly. Yeah. And uh, the power supplies. Although this is something I do want to talk about. Uh, gigabyte, like like you said, like they've been doing a push for the entire IRS branding across their line. True. Um, and, and they're doing a good job also. They've done a great job. Great I mean, job. there was a year where they tried, we, we were speaking to a lot of the Gigabyte represent, representatives actually, and they were telling us how the company is really cutting down on like, you know, marketing yeah. efforts and they're trying to consolidate their exactly. marketing. Their marketing used to be graphics cards were marketed separately, separately. motherboard guys had different laptops and laptops had separate branding. Now they are bringing them all together under a single brand. Which is very cool. And exactly. which we have been asking them to do for years, <laughs> yes. and it seems that they finally noticed that that's the best way to do it. True. Props to Asus for being the first brand, though, that exactly. really realized, or rather, really, I think, showed everyone how a good how, cohesive how, brand exactly. image. How, how it works, so that when you when you promote your motherboard, your laptop is automatically promoted. So, I mean, cohesive branding is the way to exactly. go. Apple are the masters of it, and I think Asus picked on very early with the yeah. Republic of Gamers, which yes. is what 2006, 2007. 2007 something. Like very that. early, and they've been dominating since. As far as gaming, I think components are concerned. I mean, true, Asus and Gigabyte always trade blows in like the total number of volume units sold. But I think true. the gaming market, Asus by far for a long time were the market leaders. True. And Weirdly enough, are uh, right now also the market leaders by quite a margin. Yes. Thanks to in no part, no small part of that marketing. True. But what I really wanted to talk about, sorry, I got ahead of myself, is the fact that both ASUS with ROG and Gigabyte Errors put out gaming power supplies, and they put out a bunch of like we said, a lot of other gaming uh, like stuff, um, and the power supplies were thousand two hundred watts. Yes. Which I, which which in all fairness, EVGA did too. Remember at the beginning they, when yes, EVGA put out the thousand two hundred first. I think, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Uh, and they target this towards gamers. And if you're a gamer and you're watching this, you need to know that you do not need a 1200 watt power supply. This is the area where I feel like these manufacturers go from, oh, it's cool to have gaming stuff to let's make as much money as we can selling yes. gaming stuff to these people who seem to have too much money. Because now everybody wants RGB and tempered glasses sure. and like more that's, RAM. That's fine, it at least looks nice. Right? Yeah, but when you're trying to sell someone like a 200 to $300 power supply aimed at gamers in under the context or pretext that it's going to be something you need for a high-end game, exactly. we are against that. If you ever bought a system from us, you know that we are always about telling you how it is and telling you how much of power you're going to need out of your system. Exactly. It, and unlike certain other components, like having a larger power supply does not Benefit, benefit you in, in any way. way whatsoever. If your system draws 500 watts, it draws 500 watts. Power, it draws 500 watts. It's like that simple. Having 600 will not give you any kind of like even even things like RAM. Say your games don't use more than 8 GB or 16 GB of RAM. You have that 2 GB of RAM. You have that 2 GB of RAM to use for whatever reason, right? Say if you want to run 100 Chrome tabs in your background and like have th two or three applications, fine. It will use in some way. But the power supply you will not load. Yes, but you know, regardless, regardless of how, how much you try, you can't. You can't power, make it. You yeah. can't make it work. We have a lot of people who come to us and ask us. They are like, look, I've got this thousand watt power supply. Um, you know, how much of is it drawing a thousand watts from the socket? And that's the answer is no. Like unless you're running thousand watts worth of hardware, yeah, which is like, like four graphics cards. We, we do sell like a fair number of thousand, thousand two hundred watt power supplies, but, but these are for mostly systems like mining systems who run like eight graphics cards. Yes. So. Or for workstation users whose systems are actually drawing in excess of about 700 to 800, 800. watts. And you need a little bit of a headroom in yeah, order say to get 25 that. 25 30% headroom, then you get a 1000 watt of power supply. In, so in every system. other way, you're just not going to. And the truth is, this, this logic carries over to a lot of the products that these brands are trying to sell you nowadays. That we get to talk about this because we are a retailer, we don't really represent any of these brands. And we feel that you, as a consumer, especially in this day and age, uh, have a right to know that a lot of the stuff that they're selling you, this RGB lighting, to these sync systems, to these tempered glass, you know, cases, to these ridiculously over wattage power supplies, to these really fancy graphics cards with these LCD displays and God knows what else. You don't need any of that. And this is the truth. I mean, I've always been somebody who loves high-end hardware, but I also love high-end hardware that has a purpose. 
So I feel like if there's a motherboard that has like a few extras, few extras like like I, we did an unbox, we did an unboxing mm -hmm. of the Gigabyte P360. Great board. It has like a great set of features and it's and it's priced nicely. But like when you when you go into the territory where you ter have like four PC Express slots, even though you can't and throw like, SLI, like 20 20 USB 3 ports and ports, like four M.2. Yeah. And a VR tool, header VR for the VR. front. I mean, I understand that globally there are niche markets and people who'd want this, but the average consumer is going to buy it. And the people who would usually walk in and say, I want a Maximus Extreme motherboard or a Rampage, usually are customers who don't need it. Uh, they just want it because they were marketed to saying that, yes, I need were, this, this is the best. They're marketed saying it's a high-end motherboard, get a high-end motherboard for your system. And so, in, in a way, if you're... Like say you want to spend a couple of million on a gaming PC, then fine. Maybe, I guess. Maybe. It's then your money. You should then you're getting the best of the best. But if you're like, okay, I'll get this 1070, then don't. Please don't. So, I mean, there are better things you can spend your money exactly. on. There are better monitors. There are some fantastic displays right. that surprisingly few people in Sri Lanka actually own. I feel like more people need to spend more money on That's actual true, yes. displays. Like instead of spending 40k on a motherboard, spend 20k and spend 20 more on them. On your display. On like display. you can go from a full HD like, to... Regardless of, this is something we tell people quite often, regardless of like what you put in your stuff in your PC, your display is what you'll be... Is what you'll be looking, looking at. You'll be looking 99% at the of the time. Exactly. It's like the first few days it'll be like, oh, oh my new it's PC, nice. it's you nice. You can take pictures, then, you're going to post on Facebook, yes. but the rest and of the time... And then like you'll be looking at your screen, right? So, so spend more on your screen, people. And I'm just saying, like, uh, first spend on the things that matter, on the things that actually give you performance. Do a little bit of research. If you can't and it's complicated, because God knows it is complicated. It is very complicated. Come to us. That is it's, literally it's, why... It's complicated even for us. Even like for we, us. We are, we are in and out day, day to day with tech and even for us it's complicated. Like, yeah, and we do like have why does this product of... exist? Like, why, what does that do? And the number of times we argue with each other I and know, we debate exactly. about what's good and try to clarify. We do a lot of research. A lot of research to get to know what we are. That's why we're here, so we can help you out. Uh, but I just realized those 1200 watt power supplies, probably considering that this is their first for, for True, no, power supply. I, I understand why they I, put out the 1200 I think they they want. small number, larger margin, it's going to be, because it no. would be practical to sell they, they, a cheaper power supply. I, I, I feel it was, it was like the marketing stunt, they want to put out the big guns first. Plus yes. it's, it's cheaper, it, I mean it's more practical if you're, if you're okay, they're not going to make a large number of power Yeah, supplies. exactly, and so. they're, they're not going to make it, they're yeah. going to get someone else to make it. Yeah, right. so it'll be expensive for them to make like a lower wattage no power supply. It, it will trickle. And they are competing with a lot of other brands. Yeah, it will trickle down. Yeah. Like you'll see the 1200 and then... If it, if it picks up, yeah. If, if it people picks up, want the ROG power supply, which definitely people will want. Want, and they'll start and making they'll start more making power supplies. they'll start making like 750 watts and 500 watts. It's true. I'm pretty sure they'll so come. So can't so give them too much crap for them. I mean, I mean, they are looking to make an ecosystem. And yeah. like Kushan said, like you guys should definitely actually, we'll try to put some links in the descriptions, but read more about it. Like Asus just went nuts with their tough <laughs> branding. I know tough branding was interesting though. Like um, interesting in two ways. The first way is like I like where they're going with the brand because the, um, it's value gaming. Yeah. It's essentially below their ROG Strix branding. They had a ton of different brands. They had the Expedition brand. They had a Pro Gaming. Then they had God knows some other gaming mm -hmm. brand. So what they did is they took all of these and they are consolidating then consolidating them into one brand. So you get the, your ROG. Like purebred ROG at the top. At the top, then you get the Strix ROG, then you get the tough gaming. Yeah, so it's it's nice to tier. I'm pretty sure next generation will see some tough gaming graphics, graphics cards, cards also. And we were thinking as soon as those graphics cards come out, we would be doing some themed builds yes. around tough builds. Yes. And Asus's take on the whole RAM thing. Now we just told you that Gigabyte made their own RAM and they have. And hopefully we'll probably have it in stock soon for you guys to buy. We could actually do some like all the same build off. Yeah, because yeah, it's it's pretty good. Because Gigabyte right now mm. they have everything from because uh, this they released those cases a while, yes, ago, a while ago under yes. the Extreme Gaming yes, brand. Coolers they released a while ago. And then they rebranded to Everest. So you they've got the coolers, they've got the case, the power supply just came out. They've got the graphics cards, motherboards. So you've got pretty much a good healthy ecosystem right mm. now. And maybe stay tuned. You might have some team builds coming up in the next you know few quarters. Um, more importantly though, Asus, what they've done with the RAM is that they've gone to third-party manufacturers. So they've got Corsair, they've got Team Group, they've got G-Skill, they've got like Crucial. Crucial yeah. Literally almost every big manufacturer are now making one set of RAM that is tough branded. So that's... Yeah, most people already had ROG branded RAM, right? <coughs> In team, some form, in like some Team had. Team, team, team was had one of the very few brands that actually did yeah. have proper ROG branded RAM. Uh, I mean, these guys were doing it. What, what was that brand that did? 
brands for practically Alexia. every Alexia. 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 They had, but Alexia is no longer producing no, no, Ram no, no, as far as we know. So, um, I mean, but tough brand the Ram you will find in all of your favorite flavors. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, but they are limiting it to the whole black and yellow colors. colors yeah, so. they are going with the. So I guess that's fine. I mean, one publication was pointing out how that would limit the amount of Ram you'd sell of that one particular series. So I, I feel like the sales of this will depend on how well Asus does their marketing mm. for the tough brand. So I, I feel they are backing themselves up for like the graphics card release also. Okay. And like the new new laptops are coming under the top game. That is true. And you'll have graphics cards, you'll have motherboards and I'm pretty sure you'll have a few other products also under their top branding. So and it is their cheapest gaming series. So yeah. it stands to you stands to reason that true. you'd sell a lot. You sell a lot. So we'll see. Is, I, I think Asus is strong enough to pull this off in the brand. And if they sell more numbers, that's yes. more. Yes. The only only thing about the tough branding is tough used to be the high end saber tooth stuff. Yeah. So you still have people coming in like all oh, the tough is made for like workstations yeah. and stuff. I think no that's longer. what they were trying to piggyback off of that name. True, they it no longer is. It no longer is. You don't get like the five year warranty on the Saber Tooth and all that. They don't? No, they don't. These are three year warranty. No, no these, are the, these are the tough gaming alliance, right? Do they still have those? They don't. Mm. Okay. So maybe like, they'll rename it I don't to know. something we'll else? See. I, I don't know. We'll see. Interesting choices, but you know, Asus is Asus and <laughs> they're generally good at what they do. Yeah. So, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Yeah. So more of that in the future. Uh, what Promo? is our next thing? Yes. Right, so that's that's about all for the topics. Well, it's it's a long episode, so we have a lot of things to talk about since we didn't. Mm. We Practically two weeks worth of two weeks worth of and we haven't even touched on computer really. I know exactly. So that will come soon. Uh, so before we go, a few things that we want to. Uh, I think we spoke uh, last time about uh, we, we are having FIFA tournament. So um, the RLG FIFA Championship will be happening this year. Also, it's happening on the first of July. So just. Uh, a couple of weeks to go, so um, the winner will get to represent Sri Lanka at the AFGC Asian Football Gaming Championship held in Singapore. So you get a full-on free pass. You get your stay sponsored and your ticket sponsored. So all you need to go there, do is go there and play for the country, right? Pretty so much. And Singapore is visa free, so you don't even have to get a visa. Exactly. So visa on arrival. So we'll be having tournament here at our store. So um, it's on the first of July. Practice hard. The best in the country will be showing up here, so we'll be picking just one to go to Singapore to represent Sri Lanka. And um, entrance make sure is free. Entrance is free, so you can just walk in and please sign walk up in. And Even if you want to just like yeah, see where look, you have, stand against exactly. Sri Lanka's best FIFA players, just plus, walk in. Why not? Plus, if you just want to see some good FIFA action happening, you'll have some screens that you can watch matches on. So it's going to be pretty awesome. Yes. And um, one more thing before we uh, finish up. Um, we did a promo a few weeks ago with uh, like a mix and match RLG PC promo, which was extremely popular. A lot of people a came. A lot of it. We, we, we essentially sold out yes. of practically everything we had. <laughs> everything that we had allocated for that promotion. Um, so, one request that we got at that time was like, this is a bit too expensive for me. Do you have something cheaper? So, what we did was we, we did a bundle promo which works the exact same way. I have an artwork here, um, which work, with, works with which works with uh, 1050 Ti graphics cards, which is like a very popular card. Extremely people. popular. And it's a very fast graphics card as well. So it handles almost all games perfectly fine. So starting at about 90,000 and upwards. So um, take a look, we'll have details. Um, we'll have a link in the description also, and uh, we'll have some details listed here. So if you're looking for a slightly cheaper take on the build your own PC, RLG PC thing, this is your chance to get a PC. Again, limited time. So we'll probably have this running until say towards the end of the month. Or until stocks last. Until, or until stocks last. So we have limited stocks. So if you definitely are looking for a PC, like he said, in the 90 to 110, 120,000 rupee range, definitely come in. You've got big savings on this promotion. So it's just not a set of bundled parts. They were actually giving big discounts on it. So check it out. And all of our RLG systems are always backed by a one to one component warranty for three years, which is unique to RLG. So yeah, definitely come check it out. If you want more information, we've got it in the description below. And if you want any more further information, you can always give us a call. All right, so that's about it for the bottom line today. And before we leave, I just want to thank uh, Digital Air for providing us with this beautiful mic. And you wonderful, can get us wonderful mic. 100,000 rupee mic. mic. And all the audio recording equipment that you guys don't see here. Yes. So they are the go-to place for anything high-end audio related. So please 
drop by and check them out. If you have any kind of high-end audio requirement from mics to speakers to installations to mixers to anything. And they have some really them. crazy stuff, like the kind of stuff that you just want to walk in we'll and actually, just check we'll, out. We'll, we'll actually do like a more in-depth detail. Like we a should small, do a bottom line episode with, like, with, 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 the, guys from yes, with the guys from Digital. Yes, with the guys from Digital. So we'll that you guys something. can... Uh, we'll actually put that up uh, in our to-do list. We'll do like a things about high-end audio. Yeah, not, I think you guys can learn. Like yeah. we learned so much from these guys yes, about high-end exactly. audio. We thought we knew about high-end audio, yeah. but then we apparently didn't. <laughs> no. So uh, yeah, we'll definitely look forward to that. And right. We'll uh, see you guys another day. Yep. Peace. <laughs>